Good evening, everyone. This is Ron. Uh, Monday evening, a little after after six. So we we'll get started. Uh, we had a very good discussion on yesterday. We started looking at the uh, uh, forty-two affirmations and uh, trying to become familiar with those. And uh, again, looking at the. Uh, not only our our history as Africans, but the realization that uh, uh, humans, the African, was practicing spirituality long before there was any type of religions in the earth. So, uh, and that led us to uh, even talk about or, or try to make some comparisons in the Bible, which. Uh, at this point may not have a lot of value right now until we understand what we're reading and what we're doing. But uh, it has, to me, uh, not only enlightened us, it helps me to understand a little bit more of who I am and what we're doing here and, and what this journey is about. So uh, we got into that a little bit on yesterday. We we read the affirmations and today I, I, I uh, thought about looking at a couple of them again and just at a slower pace. But first, as we always do, let's see if we have any questions or comments on anything uh, that you may have uh, come across this week. Anyone? Right. I have yes, a sir. question. Okay. But my doing, question... John? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. My my question is, is about uh, um, in Matthew, uh, I think it's Matthew 14, 22 to 34. Someone might can read it before they read it. My question was, is um, when Jesus walked on the water, and it, then he permit uh, 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 Peter to come out of the boat and walk across the, on the water to him. I'm thinking there's more to that that he was walking on walking on the water, and I don't because the land spends his consciousness and water is spirit, and he was walking up top of the water, and the biggest thing when he was before he did the walking on the water, he went into the mountain and prayed while the other disciple was on the boat already had gone. Mm -hmm. And then he came around when he was walking on the water. It, 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 I guess the wind and stuff was blowing so strongly. Then the rest of them thought it was a storm. And then when they saw Jesus, they thought it was a ghost. So Charles, give me that when Peter walked, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Matthew, to interrupt. Uh -huh. Matthew 14 and verse 22 to 34. Matthew 14, 22. Okay. And not only that, when when when, when uh, Peter got out and started walking, and it said that he saw the wind, and you can't see the wind; you can feel the wind. So I guess that's what he was meant, that he probably felt the wind. But the wind was already going when Jesus was walking on top of the water. And and, 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 and the wind frightened him to make him sink. Now, I always heard the story that he didn't keep his eyes on Jesus, and that was the reason he sank, and that could be. But I am thinking it's more spiritual in that than anything, because he was walking on top of the water. And that's yeah. what I want to understand. Okay. I'm reading it right now. If anybody else uh, sees something more familiar with this, they, you have something to uh, kind of shed some light on it. Please feel free. Matthew what? Matthew 14. Starting at verse starting at verse twenty two. I don't. 
I know there's more to it than, as Charles said. However, that's one of those scriptures that I haven't looked at. And um, I would not want, me personally, would not want to venture uh, to um, offer an understanding of it without having looked at it more deeply than what we are by reading. So may, somebody else may have looked at that or may see something there. If you do, um, please uh, let us know. Thank you. Hey, Charles. Uh, yes, sir. As, as we sometimes do, uh, we, we want to give this some attention and, and, and uh, so if, if you don't mind, we'll read this and, and talk about it uh, over the weekend. We, we get That's chance. Awesome. We, okay. Uh, good, very good question. And, and as always, we encourage questions and uh, thank you. But uh, uh, as I read here reading this, is that there is a lot in here that uh that probably needs explain and help with the explanation. So, but thank you for the question, and I promise you we'll get back to it. Okay. Okay. Right, thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay. If you would, please, uh, we, we uh, on yesterday, looked at the 42 affirmations and a couple of, I want to look at them again, just to, just to cover them. It's, it's not something I, I think we should rush through. And a uh, couple of them kind of got my attention. So we were talking about, and I mentioned on yesterday that I, I was reading from a book that George has sent me called Spirituality Before Religion. And uh, I, I, I really like this book. It's a lot of information in this book. But uh, I, I noticed that there are several other uh, sources online that have these affirmations kind of worded differently. And uh, it was my hope, or, or, or I, and I'm, I'm guessing this may be it in my hand right here, that the the earliest, uh, you know, version that uh, the most closely uh, resembled the original text or, or the original word wordings of it. So, uh, but a couple of them. Uh, th th there are about, uh, I, I didn't, probably 10 or so that talk about the creator's creation. And as I mentioned to you yesterday, that, that really intrigued me, intrigues me because that covers a lot of things. And we, we, when we think about the, uh, creator we think about god the father we don't think about ourselves we don't see ourselves there or what does that mean to me or how you know how does that uh like for example I, i'll read a couple of them it says i have not stolen from the creator's creation i have not killed the creator's creation i have not caused pain to the creator's creation I have not made the creator's creation cry. I have not wallowed in or caused the creator's creation to act regretfully. I have not uh, aggressively acted toward the creator's creation. Um, I have not conspired against the creator's cre creation. And a lot of these sort of sound like they overlap. I have not terrorized the creator's creation. So, uh, 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 a lot of them, uh, to me, it, it, it puts me in the mind of, of when we talk about our understanding of heaven and earth and uh, knowing that those two things go together. 
and knowing that they sound like uh, opposite things, they are not opposite things. They're one in the same and one balances the other. So what am I saying? I'm saying the I in the I that have not is the balance of the creator's creation because we are one in the same. So when, when I look at that, that's kind of the thought that I had. It That hits closer to home than just these words on the page. Um, it, 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 it even, even to the point where we, we, you can incorporate everything that's in the universe. The I represents everything that is in the universe. So what is it that we, that we see or that is unseen that is not the creator's creation? So that kind of stuck out to me because that is talking about me maintaining, me realizing on a daily basis, uh, meditating on being balanced being being uh one with the creator and if i am one with the creator then i'm also one within myself does anybody see anything else in those and uh that that uh i think the relationship is probably the same as it is with um um femininity and masculinity mm -hmm. that they are not two separate entities and when I think about them, you know, being one with, I think about um, the whole concept of being a complement to each other. One cannot exist without the other. Yes. And, and that's how I see uh, the human's relationship uh, in terms of the creator. Now that the creator has brought this into existence, um, one cannot, one cannot, um, they complement each other, and one cannot exist without the other. Yes. Great example. I agree. Anyone else? I might be stepping over bounds and looking at it and feeling it wrong. I see I, me, and you in it. I, me, and you? Help uh -huh. me out, Charles. What, what, what do you say? say? Say it again for me. I see I, me, and you. What I mean by that, when God told uh, Abraham, tell him that I, I am that sent you. Not Abraham, Moses. I Moses. am that sent you. Uh huh. And so then it falls into me. And then then from, from from me to you. I'm not you as you, but I'm talking about of, of a whole. Yeah. So what uh, you're saying, let me make it clear. If I may, what, what do you, are you saying that I am sent you and the, the one who's being yes. sent is me and the one I'm going right. to is you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Thank I like you. that, Charles. Yeah, thank you. And and I think uh, what we're we're doing is uh, taking accountability for our spirituality. That this is this is something that you uh, desire that you go out to obtain that you seek and. Uh, we're doing it collectively, but we're doing it as we each and every one of us desire. And and because we all have a strong desire, but we also feed off each other's energy. So, but yeah, I, I like that. I like your observation. There is another one here that I'm looking at that I thought was interesting. It said, and, it, and, and the wording of these is so simple, right? That, that you you just think you're just reading something without giving a lot of thought to it or it just makes sense and you don't give thought to it. But it says, I, I have not turned away from words of right and truth. I have not turned away from words of right and truth. Um. So uh, uh, again, that as, as all of these are, 
that is not an external thing. Uh, the, we, as we discover uh, uncovering truth now on this journey we're on, and what we are discovering is, especially uh, by pausing to look at these affirmations, we're seeing that the truth that we've been uh, searching for has been us all along. So the, the thing that you feel that resonates in you, uh, that moves and, and that agreeable part of you, that harmony that you feel is the truth being uncovered in you. So the, the I will not turn away. From, we, we know what right or righteousness is and, and, and truth. Uh, that one is, you know, looking at where we are in the world today. Uh, and some of the uh, things that we still see going on that appear to be right that we know that are not right that that are that are uh, put in place to to uh, sort of uh, sort of make us see things that that are not true, just like uh, like the wars that are going on. Both of those wars, those major wars. Uh, and, and my uh, guess, I guess, have a different motive than what we have been told. So you know what truth is. You know what truth looks like in you. You know what rights is. You hold true to who you are. And uh, that one to me is a, another one that, that's extremely personal. When we talk about truth, and I... I Truth is not seen in the material world at all. Truth does not even exist in the material world. Truth is purely spiritual. And truth, in the way truth is known uh, in the material world is, the way, is by way of expression based on your experience with truth. You cannot point to truth in the material world. You experience truth uh, in the spiritual realm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. It, there is no, there is there is no physicality to truth at all. It's only a spiritual experience. Mm. So, when we seek spiritual experiences, that are not. That, that are not uh, congruent with spirituality, then uh, we are out of sync with uh, the universe itself, and we are on a futile, futile journey when we seek truth uh, in this material world. When, when the church says that Jesus said, I am the, the truth, and the life, the truth that Jesus is speaking of is not something that you can see. And to be honest with you, when he said, I am the truth, he's not speaking of him as a physical entity. He's speaking of a spiritual experience. I am is the spiritual experience that you are, that you are, uh, that's available to you or the spiritual experience that you have. But, but it's not something that you can actually are defined, but you can't experience it. I'm done. Thank you, Pastor. Anyone else? Okay. And I'm just, just picking out a couple of these. If, if you see something out here, if you have them in front of you, something you want to or look at. Uh, here, here's one, I think. Ron, Ron, yeah. wait, my, Ron, my concern is that most people don't have them in front of them. Yeah. And, and I was talking about them is, is one thing, but I want us to keep focused on, on one, this, if nothing else. And that focus is these, these affirmations are describing the spiritual essence of who we are. What, what, the question that you have to ask yourself, uh, is this an affirmation 
that you have been experiencing? Is it one that you have embraced? Or is it something that has been a guiding force or you want to be a guiding force in your life? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. So that's that's what I'm saying. Um, it, as we read them, I don't want to. I don't want us just listen at them as you read them, or as George read them, or whomever is reading them. I hear it with your soul and not with your mind or your ears. Make sense? Can we do that? Because the depth of these. The depth of, of these affirmations uh, is, the, the depth is, is so deep until you can never reach the not only the bottom of it, but you can't even reach the source of it. Because it, because truth, this, uh, this concept of truth and us being truth, it changes when it comes in contact with different circumstances. Because what happens with say, Audrey or, or what happened with George is different. Even though they're the same things that may happen, the circumstances that bring them to that space is different. And, the, and how we relate our truth to them in regards to those circumstances is different. You know, it's, it's like when we deal with our children, they are our children, however, they are different. And the truth, and when we express our experience with truth, when we are guiding them, it is not the same, but yet it is the truth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Somebody can help me, please? Because I feel like I'm struggling here. Yeah, I don't. Hey, I, don't I, I don't mean to interrupt anyone. Uh, repeat that what you just said. I heard it, but I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said that the, the truth is is different in different circumstances. Um, is not relative at all. How? But when I deal with my children, I deal with them differently. And when I deal with them differently, they can do the same thing. But I deal with them based upon their personality. Am I dealing with them based upon their personality? Both of them are, are uh, the, what I'm expressing to them is truth, but I'm expressing it to them in a different way. Does that make sense? Yes, so, sir. Uh, I caught that. I got it. I guess uh, the example I was going to use, and, and this, this, I hope this is the same what you were saying, Pastor. Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And they say, some say the prophet, some say Elijah, some say. So he is not saying we all have the same personality or I act like him or they favor, we favor each other. He is saying that you should recognize the truth in each and every one of us. It should resonate with you. You should feel the rhythm when 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 you see this truth. If this is what you are seeking, this should touch you. And all of this should be familiar to you. The same thing I say, you should feel from Elijah. You should, should, should feel from John the Baptist or whatever. So that's what I'm, each and every one of us on this phone would hear these words and and from from a different place because of our who we are and our experiences, but at the same time, it should resonate to us. So if that if that that's yeah that, that resonates, uh, Ron. That uh, this is Georgia Philly. That resonates with me. But my question is, when the scripture says we worship God in spirit and truth. Does that have any relevance to this particular affirmation? And I think that's the question because again, we all worship well, and and when we talk about worship in terms of how we may pray, 
how we may meditate, but if it's done in spirit and is done in truth, <laughs> yeah, does that have any relevance to this particular affirmation? It does. That scripture says that they that worship um, him must worship him in spiritual truth. It's a, it doesn't say in spirit and truth. It's spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. um, the the, the um, if you think about what Jesus was saying and the um, context of it, um, what you see is that he's saying this is not you. You can't submit because worship means to submit. You can't uh, submit any way you want to. You, you can't submit based on what the priests say the truth is. You submit based upon spiritual truth, based mm -hmm. upon uh, your experience uh, with truth itself, your experience with the Father, uh, with, with uh, the Creator. So, so it's, it, 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 it's, um, it's actually telling us, don't depend on your religious teachings uh, to uh, to get to the truth, because you, your submission to the Creator by 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 the, uh, following the edicts uh, of your church or or your denomination is not uh, where you're going to find the truth. The truth is found in, uh, in the Spirit, uh, because there is no material truth. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yes. yes. Yes, thank you. Hey, George, were you referring to a specific um, affirmation? Or all of them in general? You're muted, George. George, you're muted. All, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Audrey. I was thinking of all, in, all of them in general, but at the same time, you know, looking at the importance when we talked about the principle of truth. And so as we read these affirmations, um, it is, you know, our desire, my desire is to be able to know that that's the way to truth and the light. That's the way in terms of <clears throat> being able to realize that is not by might nor by power, but by the spirit. And so if we are operating in the spirit, you know, then our, our intuition is something that we have to move with the spirit versus what the doctrines may say. So that's, you know, the point I was just trying to look at, but when Ron spoke about I have not turned away from words, you know, and righteousness, then in what we've been, again, discussing, I think has more relevance to me to know that let me do it in spirit and not in intelligence, not in what other people say, but what does your heart say? What does your soul say? If that resonates already, but I was just speaking in general of all of the affirmations, but in that one also Ron was talking about. That helps. Or give you some clarity anyway. I'm done. Roger. And, and, and Joe, that's the same thing. Hold, 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 hold up a sec. Audrey, I, is that help? Um, I was going to say that yeah, I agree. And in, in, it's all of them that kind of create a mindset, a yeah. particular mindset um, that brings you into the into the seven principles. And um, there's something else I was thinking, but I can't remember what it is right now. But I'll I'll, I'll remember and come back. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Like I was saying, that the, the, the word says you can only come come to him, but in spirit and true. You just can't come to him any kind of way. So the 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 hymn that you're speaking about is you. 
You can't come to right. awareness of who you are unless you do it um, through the spirit and in uh, spiritual right. truth. Now, listen at the struggle we have in talking about truth. It's because it's spiritual. If it were a car, we could talk about it. We could dissect that because it's material. We're familiar with it. But the process of truth covers every one of these affirmations. And one of the things I want to also reiterate is that you are not expected to remember this. No. You're expected to, if you embrace it, that's what changes you. This, this is a description of the characteristics of our spiritual essence. And with the spiritual essence, with, when we are true to our spiritual essence, these uh, affirmations are visible in our lives to us and those around us. And you don't do a checklist to see which one you are at being expressed for. You just know that you do the right thing and then you don't have to worry about correcting it later. And the right thing that you that you are that I'm talking about is uh, when you when you uh, do the right thing from the depth of your of your soul. Do not beat yourself up if it appears to you not to be the right thing. the 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 the, um, the objective is for your desire to remain the same, meaning that for your desire to, to uh, be made aware of the totality of your essence, of your nature. And when that happens, these, um, at, these affirmations become a part of us. Now, let me say something else about these affirmations. You can go through every one of those affirmations and I guarantee you, at some point in your life, you have recognized yourself being expressive of at least, uh, probably all of them at some point in your life. We just didn't know what they were. Does that make sense? I mean, when yeah. you talk about what, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just saying, you make sense. OK. Oh, I got I remember now what I wanted to say. Um, the fact that they all go, I, 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 it seems to be setting up a mindset of sort of knowing who you are. And then it also seems to be setting up the I am mindset. Um, you know, once you, once you sort of internalize it, because then you can say, I am that person who is, who is committed to truth and harmony and order and justice and all of those things. So yeah, that the I part seems to kind of set up that mindset. But I also see that Audrey, the I part sets up that mindset and then at the same time, it it is saying to us, uh, when when you are able to embrace this, then you are more able to to be a an agent of harmony for the whole earth. And, and you don't have to walk around saying, "I'm an agent for harmony in the earth." You don't have to do that. You're 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 embracing it, and the way you are uh, respond to to our humanity, to nature itself, uh, is, is the voice that speaks to uh, your being the um, uh, the agent of, uh, of harmony. Or an agent of peace. And of truth. And of balance. All those. Right. All yeah. of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Audrey, when you had mentioned, you know, I, not in terms of just the letter, but it just made me think about um, seeing with our, with our eye and not our eyes. And I think that if we can appreciate nature, again, being our first teacher, 
you know, when it comes to as so above, so below, then there's that spiritual essence that existed, you know, with humanity, you know, from the beginning. So seeing it with our eye, as you say, in terms of the I am, and, we, you know, again, it just has deep, much deeper, I think, um, spiritual connotation when, as we are going through the affirmation. So, you know, I appreciate seeing it in the perception of of not just the letter, but what does that seeing with our eye means? For the ani ani, I am. That's, um, I am what you need me to be when you need me to be. I am the all in all. That's that's the I am. So if we look at these <clears throat> these affirmations, then you are everything that humanity needs um, when you need to be it. Right now, we are a source of peace for humanity, but also we're a source of comfort for humanity. And, and that comfort is different than um, what we have seen previously as being comforting. Uh, the, uh, the idea of uh, Mayot being the same as the, as the uh, what we term in the Bible as Holy Spirit, they are one and the same, which means that uh, the, uh, they are the same breath that we breathe. So, so if we embrace it, then the spirit the spiritual essence of our being is what guides us to, to not only embracing, but being the affirmations that we are talking about. And, and, and it's just like anything else. Uh, there is no way today I did a one and three. Or right now I'm representing two and four. You know, it, it's just a, it's the way you live your life. It's, it's the way you carry yourself. It's, it's how you think. Is how you process what you think. Does that you, know, you understand? What, can you see what I'm saying? I, I I don't believe that that we have to 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 um, be in remembrance of, of the attribute of, of the affirmations, but I do know that we we need to be in remembrance of who we are. We need to be always aware of that. And, and the most difficult times is when we're having difficulties in our lives. It's easy when things are going well. But the, the time to remind yourself of who you are is when things are going awry. Right now, when we talk about that, we are Elohim. Um, when we talk about being Elohim, what, um, and we say that, well, I am Elohim, so what does that mean? Being Elohim changes the way you think. It changes the way you interface with, with um, humanity and nature and everything around you. Being Elohim changes um, uh, the, the way that you process things with other people. It also changes the way you, um, uh, you feel emotionally when, when you feel like you've been wronged by someone. As the as it, rather than seeing them as your enemy or someone who's out to hurt you, you see them as someone who really don't know who they are and they need direction. And and you're 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 living in a state, you're living in a meditative state, uh, is the energy force that that um that touches them and, and moves them in a direction that they have never probably thought about moving in. You may not see it happen, but it happens. How many people have come into your life and, and um, you saw them later and they tell you that something you said to them changed them or, or something you, you, you said to someone else who mistreated you changed them? No different than the example George gave up removing the insect from the uh, table, from the billiard table. No different than that. Uh, I didn't know he saw that. Didn't matter. What, 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 it wasn't an effort to show anything other than move it, right? But it was a message. C can you see? Mm -hmm. It was a message. 
and, and I know I'm struggling here, but um, I got help, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. I'm going to read another one that I think kind of touch on what you just said. Uh, another one talks about, I have not betrayed my ancestors. And we've talked about this on a number of occasions, but uh, tie in ancestors somewhat for us. I have not betrayed my ancestors. So how do you betray your ancestors? And and, and I'm, 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 I'm hoping this isn't coming across as being, uh, you know, a, a a, a lesson or, or being an academic or anything, because that's not the intent. And it's not. I don't okay. seem to be an academic. However, I would like, before I say anything about the ancestors, I would like to hear from someone else if you care to uh, speak about it. And you don't I have that. a little bit. Okay. Sorry, Charles. Go ahead. No problem. I have a little bit of it. I might not have it all. It's just like when you, when you, the way you treat the children, and when they go out into the world, you, you, then you revoke or tell them, you know you're Richard. And I'm thinking that's how, it, that's how it is. You understand what I'm saying, Rip? I do. Okay. I do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Charles. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, uh, Ron, when you mentioned about ancestors, something that comes to my my heart is in my family, you know, my great great grandfather, you know, I was told, you know, didn't have the uh, ability to be able to read. However, he was able to take care of all of his children and was able to manage the farm mm -hmm. without the so-called education, you know what I mean, in terms yeah. of how we see it academically, but just to be able to know that I had an ancestor that was able to farm. He was able to, you know, understand nature. He was able to provide for his children. And I think that in terms of perception and being able to appreciate our ancestors, there's, you know, you know, I guess many um, stories, allegories, or 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 metaphors, whatever, in terms of us being able to take the time to appreciate our ancestors. And so, the more that we know of the stories, or I think the more that we're able to share the spirit, you know, of what sustains us and motivate us to continue to appreciate the relationships, I think is real powerful because there's things that I've said to some of you is that in my relationship living up North, you know what I mean? I have a deep desire of wanting to try to understand better, you know, what we spiritually and, and physically, you know, may have grown through, but to be able to appreciate it today yeah. is that, that you want to share with your grands or share with those that you dearly love. So I don't know if that resonates with, you know, it, what... it does. It does very much so, George. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to go for somebody else. So, good evening, everyone. One of the things I want to add is that in order for me to respect my ancestors, one thing I have to do, I have to respect my elders. If you're not, if I'm not respecting my elders, there's no way that I can ever respect my ancestors. Um, It, 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 elders just mean something to me. Yeah. Mr. Durer was an elder. You know, and, and it, it, when he would come into the Waffle House, hey, your money ain't no good. Because he was an elder. Um, I greatly appreciate that Earth, Wind, and Fire generation 
all the way back to a cable line to where I am now. And one of the things that I see in in Spartanburg, South Carolina, uh, you have some seasoned African Americans, uh, slightly older than Reverend Richard, and they have a distaste for my generation because we do not show them respect. And we have to show them respect because them those are the people that know how to fight. We don't know how to fight. If we don't get what we want instantly, we gone. So in respecting, with me now, in respecting my ancestors, I have to respect my elders. And I think I do a, a pretty good, a mediocre job with it. Um, I will say this in conclusion. What, 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 which is it? Pretty good or mediocre? I was, it, you know, it's something that I know I can improve on. Uh, I would I'm just, say I'm solid in it. Yeah, I, I would I, say I I'm solid in it. I, yeah, I, but yet it's something that I know I can. You can always improve on improve. I, I, I can think respect. Yeah. Well, well, thank you, Ron. Uh. You can respect your ancestors and respect your elders. You got African American females walking around here telling little children to call them by their first name. You ain't gonna get nowhere with that. And I've heard it. I know ain't y'all ain't never heard that before. Yet I've never heard an African American male tell a child to call him by. And if I ever heard that, I gotta have a little talk with him. No, keep in mind something, George. I, I don't want to don't want to slow you down. The affirmation talked about betrayal. I have not betrayed. So that that puts a, a slightly different spin on it. How can you betray your ancestors? You How you, well, you know what? Yeah, b betrayal, and I believe Miss Barbara talked about betrayers. She talked about the bee and the tray part, and um, not. I reckon you could betray your ancestors or betray your elders. Um, number one, if you if I'm buying off into instant gratification. It has to be, I have to get it the minute I do it. That's a betrayal of my ancestors. Because in, in any kind of arena, it's crawl, walk, run. You grow in the things. So if, if, if I'm out here and I, it has to be instantly for me, that's a betrayal of elders and that's a betrayal of ancestors. And that's the best answer I got at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Uh, this is Mary. I have a thought. Yes, ma'am. Go on, Mary. If, hey, if I'm the ancestor and the ancestor is me, to betray the ancestor is to betray myself, which means I have probably committed those things that the affirmation tells me I shouldn't have done, but I did it. So that's how I see it because betraying, because we're all one. So how can yeah. I betray the and How can I do that unless I'm doing it to myself? Just a thought, not quite sure. Well, that's how I see it. Thanks. Thank you. Now that was a good response right there. When you betray yourself, you're going to betray your elders and ancestors. I, I can get down with that one. Thank you. Um, is, oh, I have a question that goes upon what she just said about if you betray yourself, you're betraying yourself, if you betray others. And that that is so because we are all one, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am.
Um, well, go ahead, Pastor. I'm yeah, sorry. Man. Go ahead. I got up this morning. I, I I leave work. I leave home at five a.m. and I'm I'm walking outside, and I could feel the acorns that I'm stepping on. And at five a.m., it, it' pretty loud. They're pretty crunchy, you know. But uh, but I try to avoid them. But you're gonna step on one because there's a big tree out here. I look at that acorn. That acorn is millions of years old. That's the same acorn that was in the field when this text was written back in, in, in uh, 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 <clears throat> um, Africa, a uh, uh, Kavalon, uh, many, 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 many years ago. Because the DNA in that acorn is in every acorn tree. And every time a tree pops out of the earth, that tree has time for has opportunity for redemption. Whatever happened to it, it has time to be a better tree, uh, to 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 be uh, because it it gets opportunity to be regenerated, get regenerated, and comes back and comes back. So as we are, as we live, we have lived. Um, we have lived because we are one. We are the same spirit. We are the same essence of every African, every man that has been in the earth. And all the injustices, we have a chance to make those wrongs right. We have the ability to forgive. We have the desire to forgive. We understand the energy of love and compassion. We understand the hurt that was done generations ago and, and how to mend those wounds. We have the opportunity to stand in the place of time and, and dissolve anything that's called time and, and, and space. We have an opportunity to be energy of truth. And to, to do anything other than that, while we're on this journey, while we have moved ourselves in position to, to desire to do and know better would be a betrayal to mankind, be a betrayal to ourselves. So standing in the gap is, 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 is more than just uh, standing up for someone this is righting every wrong. This is taking care of all the lynchings. This is taking care of all the animals and insects that have died just because people want to kill. This is taking care of all the elk and the moose and the elephants that have died unjustly. This is standing up for everything that is human, everything that the creator created. So being an ancestor, it's not only being Elohim, we are every drop of DNA from that acorn seed. We are all of that. So I, I, I agree with everything that was said. Uh, I, I just kind of, that one was another one that kind of stuck out to me, kind of kind of moved me a little bit. I'm done. We're betraying the ancestors. I think that all of us have betrayed the ancestors on the own. Every time we embrace something that is contrary uh, to our, our lineage or our ancestors and the way that uh, we, from the beginning, were taught to live and to think, it's an unconscious betrayal of our ancestors. Uh, the way we treat each other, if it's uh, outside of the parameters of love and kindness, we have betrayed our ancestors. We, we think about betraying our ancestors based upon what we do uh, collectively, but that betrayal is also individual. Uh, if you 
uh, what George is talking about, uh, respect to the ancestors. Um, if I don't respect, if I don't respect my wife, if I don't respect the fem the femininity of this earth, then I have betrayed my ancestors, because my ancestors know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is no earth without fem femininity. There's no life without it, and every time that yeah. I I disrespect that 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 um that representative of femininity, then I have betrayed my ancestors. When we entered um, Christianity, uh, we unknowingly was entered in a space of, of betrayal. However, our ancestors knew that we had no clue as to what we were doing in relationship to a betrayal to them. So they kept us. The life of the ancestors is what kept us and brought us to the point where we are now. And if we if we recoil from what we are doing, or if we um, walk away from what we are doing, then that is a slap in the face, and, and that is a total betrayal of our ancestors, because they are the ones who have brought us to this place of understanding. And no academician has ever done it. When, 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 we, when we look at education at being uh, an opportunity to, to get a larger check and live in a better neighborhood, then we are betraying our ancestors. Because the education with our ancestors but was for the express purpose of knowing that you're God. Knowing that you're God. That was for the express purpose of knowing the divinity, that the divine one that you are. And everything else grew from that. And now we are righting a wrong, as Rowan said. All of these unconscious betrayals that has taken place, we are making them righteous. We are righting the things that were wrong because we are knowingly making every effort to embrace, but not only embrace, to be guided by our ancestors. Uh, and I, I feel like there are times when I'm like, forgive me, because the ancestors are the ones who were with us before there was anyone against us. And are we embracing all of the things that were against us as being, and owning it as opposed to recognizing that it is it, it is less than um, spiritual. It is not spiritual at all, and it has no desires to be spiritual. When we embrace that, then we are betraying the ancestors. Anything that we have learned from in the last um, what year, the years over the years that we have been studying this and trying to get understanding of truth. All of that is showing us that we have unconsciously betrayed our ancestors. And, and in many cases, we have been forced to do that. Mm -hmm. so, so the betrayal it, it has to end. And we should never, from this point forward, consciously betray our ancestors by virtue of embracing something that we know does not come from the beginning. It does not come from our ancestors. That does not have its roots in, in Africa. That does not have its roots, well, I should say a cable line. Does not have its roots in the Garden of Eden. Does not have its roots in the womb of, of, of um, that African life giver. The reason I'm so strong about femininity is because Though femininity and masculinity are complementary, one cannot exist without the other. But if it were not for femininity, there would be no masculinity, period. Because all came from that same womb. It is no coincidence that, that, that we talk about or we, we see um, that everything, every human came from that womb of that femininity or that female. 
when we look at that, we, we have to see when, when masculinity began to take charge of everything, that was the biggest betrayal of our ancestors ever when we bought into that. Because look at what's happened since masculinity has, has, has moved itself in a place where it has no business. And that is the place of birth and righteousness. It cannot birth righteousness. There will never be righteousness in the earth until we set it right with our ancestors. And the way we do that is by embracing femininity and, and recognizing femininity for what it is. The greater force for harmony is, is, um, is femininity. Masculinity is a complement to that. It is not that. Because masculinity cannot birth anything. It's a complement to that. It feeds into that. It, it protects it. And, and, and by protection, I'm saying that it does not allow for, masculinity does not allow for femininity to be pushed to the background or to be, uh, or to, um, be spoken of illy or treated any kind of way. It doesn't, it doesn't lend itself uh, to having uh, 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 the representative of femininity in a place in a subservient position, uh, a position of inferiority. That that is a total betrayal of our ancestors. It's a total betrayal of spirituality. Period, because every religion that that grew out of uh, uh, or a false belief in in the uh, spiritual beginning, every one of them are masculine control. Every one of them are manipulated by by the representative of masculinity, and that is the reason wherever men are in control representing masculinity, there is chaos. Always been like that. So, at this juncture. I solely embrace, as I've done in the past, the the um, femininity, the feminine energy that is the birth, that is the womb of everything that is. And I I seek for all of us forgiveness for our unconscious betrayal. I will yeah, betray yeah. my conscious. It was unconscious. Yeah. And I seek forgiveness for that from our ancestors so we can move forward with the guidance of our ancestors. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very well. I summed that up beautifully. This may be a good well, place to pause, but go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, George, with you. Uh, no, Reverend I'm, Richard, I, I... Oh, okay, then. You can go ahead, Mr. George. I don't no, no, know. you go ahead. I'm sorry. We got both G on yeah, the call. Yeah. But you got it. Okay. Well, well thank you, Mr. George. Um... Reb, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly in what you stated, that masculine energy cannot give birth to anything. It has to come in by way of feminine energy. However, in that, there's still some things in masculine energy that's good. And I don't hear enough good of masculine energy. I hear a lot of. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Whoa, 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 whoa! That's not what I said. Reverend Richard, I didn't say Reverend Richard. I didn't say you said that. No, no, no. I never said. I did not say there was no good in masculine in masculinity. I said that masculinity is out of his lane. That's basically what I said. I'm sorry. And and Rev, I I if I said that. I, I said I don't hear enough good about masculine energy. And there is some good in masculine energy. And um, well, I think good? we need to... Do... Reverend Richard... No, seriously. I'm, I'm serious. What is okay. the good? I'm, I'm not the saying good it's of not masculine good. I'm just asking you what it is. Reverend Richard, it's so ugly that sometimes we don't see how beautiful masculine energy can be. 
because it's so ugly. Yet we we see the ugliness of it, yet we don't see the beauty of it. For example, Reverend Richard, and and when my nephews were living with me, um, I asked them, I say, hey, what'd you learn today in school? But I was like, okie doke, then well, learn about yourself today. Okie doke, then. You ain't going to live in my house and eat my food, and you have no enthusiasm to learn. That's masculine energy. And I know I hurt his feelings. Then I told Monique, I said, Monique, don't make him back whole again. That's masculine energy. It's ugly. And in some cases of masculine energy, it's so ugly, we don't see the beauty of it. Um, that That's just my, and Reverend Richard, I never said that you said that. I said I don't hear enough good of masculine energy. And I do feel masculine energy has some good traits. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. I apologize, George, for attributing that to you. But um, oh, apology I apologize, just... Accepted Rev. Thank you. George? Yeah, no, I, I was going to say, um, already mentioned earlier in reference to the seven principles and because we can appreciate order which is one of the principles we can appreciate harmony we can appreciate balance these are all principles that all are one when we talk about being in harmony so there's divine order and if it's from the womb of a woman that humanity was birthed from an African woman, then I think there's order that we're coming into an appreciation in terms of the things that we've always may have talked about in terms of bringing things to the light. And as we begin to appreciate the light that we're receiving, now order and balance and harmony is manifesting because I desire to want to be in order. Um, and so when we talk about mayot or mayot, you know, it's, it's, it's the feminine energy, you know, that has given us the affirmations. Yeah, the affirmation, the vision to, to be able to, again, appreciate order. I mean, as we talk about if we're lining up with, with nature, if we're lining up with the cosmos and so above, so below, then look at how it's aligning in a way that we're talking about how do we appreciate order. And so if, if a mother is nurturing her child, I think that there's a balance that we both play because we both have the masculine and feminine energy in us. I have, you know, again, some of my my mother's intuition, my father's, and I, but I think that it's a situation again where these principles, these affirmations, I think bring out the order. Thank you, George. I I, I, I want to say this. I'm done. Um, it's no coincidence that every baby before it matures is a female. That's no coincidence. It does not become male until close to the time for it to be birthed. That's, why, why is that so? Because the, par the, the paramount source of life it's femininity. When the world is going awry, <clears throat> women begin to move into positions because they are representative of feminine, fem, femininity, of authority. And look at how men who empower 
are fighting African women who are in spaces of power. The judges, the congressmen, a congresswoman, all of these people are being fought. The, the uh, lawsuit to stop black women from helping other black women be entrepreneurs. Why is that so? Why is that so prevalent now? Regardless of what we may feel, think, or believe, if you look at the truth of the matter, you will find that nothing changes for the better until it is nurtured by femininity. That's when it changes. The loudest voices for, for, for our harmony, those loudest voices, are, the voices are coming primarily from females, the representatives of femininity. Are they masculine? Yes, they are. But let's hear the voice of the universe crying out for the deliverance of humanity. If there's not a womb present to cry out, there is no delivery of humanity because it must be delivered from a womb, a womb of righteousness, loving kindness, a womb that embraces truth, a womb that knows it is divine, a womb that can only produce divinity. When we embrace that, then, then we begin to be the system of support that we are supposed to be. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not saying that um, masculinity is bad and, and nobody and, and men uh, should be uh, lorded over. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that men is a representation of masculinity that has lost his mind. Men are representative of an attitude of, of, uh, of a nature that is so barbaric until it is comfortable with whatever happened to people, whatever happens to the earth, whatever happens to, to the environment. And I'm, and I'm saying that that, 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 is not, that that is not supposed to be the case. Women that represent femininity did not get us to the place where we are. Y'all know that. And, and, and I, I, would, I would always stand on, on the highest peak declaring that the trouble with the world today is because of masculine energy not knowing its place. It is trying to give life when it can't. And as a result of it, it's making it up as it go along and what we see as, as a result is chaos. It's just it. I'm done. Thank you. Um, I'm sitting here listening and, and searching. I, I, I wish I knew a, a way that we can talk about masculine and feminine energy without seeing people, without seeing men and women. And, and get that across and so nobody is uh because when you talk about uh, uh masculine and feminine energy you're talking about all of us and and and, I, and that's that's why you know what we're doing now is trying to bring balance to it and i wish there was a way that we don't we, we could see this from without without being men versus women because we, we turn it into something when we talk about it seem to anyway. Uh, well, I, I, I wonder why it's so difficult, Ron, because we when we talk about other things in the earth, we talk about a tree or acorn, we can see the masculine and femininity in that. Yeah. You know, why is it so difficult? Because the we have a, a, a masculine mindset. We have yeah. a superiority complex with masculinity. And we feel like we're being debased if we talk about how um, uh, how destructive men have been in the earth. 
And, and, and when I say men, I'm talking about the representative of masculine energy because I, I, I represent masculine energy more so than I do feminine energy because of the structure of my, of, of my body, because of the, uh, the, um, uh, my, uh, because of my DNA. I'm not saying at all that I'm not feminine, but I am saying that the overwhelming control in the earth is masculinity, is masculine energy. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Well, I think this has been a great discussion. I think this is a good place to take quick, a pause. I, I know y'all about to pause. Just quick question, Reb. I want to know if I heard you correctly. Did you state that the African American female is showing other African American females how to start a business? Finance it. What was that again, Reb? They are financing other African American women who want to be entrepreneurs. Oh, okie doke, then. Well, the reason why I just wanted clarity on that female friend of mine, she's teaching, she's been appointed a position to aid other African American females um, in becoming entrepreneurs. Now, I don't take offense to that. Yet, I do know some people that would take offense to that because it's not aiding humanity. You're, you're labeling it, you're keeping it in the female arena. Ain't no big deal to me. Not a big deal to me. Yet, I do know other males that would take offense to that to say, why wouldn't you help everyone? So, it would be nice, as Ron stated, that if we can talk about masculine and feminine energy without bringing people in it or gender, because both mammals occupy the energy. Um, that's it right there. I, that's it. Thank y'all. Why well, men don't do it for themselves? What's that again, Rip? Men should, should do it for themselves instead of waiting on women to do it for them. Or men should right. have been helping women all that time. <laughs> there again, Audrey. Or men should have been helping women all that time, and there wouldn't have been a need for women to help women. Absolutely. You're right. Okay, Ron. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone. Questions and comments. There are a couple more here that I thought were important, and uh, we we want we if we get to them next week we we will. Uh, please remember we have a question on the table. Charles asked a question from Matthew fourteen, starting at verse twenty two. So if uh, pastor and especially the teachers have a chance to take a look at that, please do so, and uh, we hopefully will get to that Saturday. Okay. Thank but, you. Uh, th thanks again. I hope everybody has have a great week, and uh, look forward to hearing seeing you again Saturday morning. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Hey, Hi, everybody. Hey, I have a quick, quick, quick question, um, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, are we not getting getting together at church on on first and second Sunday? Because I went to the church yesterday and there wasn't nobody there. Um, but they have not been responding, in Lamont. Okay. So, so no. Uh, maybe we oh. should talk about that because there are. Um, I believe that the whole idea of church has shifted uh -huh. away, away from a centralized structure because I, I don't believe that the creator intends for us to be um, a symbol of what we are saying is not effective for humanity. And if we are in structures mimicking what we once were, then are we not sending the wrong signal? So I think it's the creator is changing that forever. You, th you think the creator has what now? Change that forever. And that's something that oh, we yeah? can definitely discuss. Okay, okay. Um, so bring it up, bring it up on Saturday. Uh, probably this Saturday or probably next Sunday. If I'm not okay. on the call. I'll bring it. Well, next time I'm on, next time I'm on the call, I'll, I'll, yeah, if I'm on the call, uh, I'll bring it up. Definitely. Thank you.
All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Yes, sir. All right. Good night. Good night, Good night. everyone. Great week. Good night.